My next recipe combines my love of Chinese food found everywhere in Britain with my passion for pies. Pies and puds tend to be traditional hearty fare, but occasionally I like to mix things up a bit, like now. Here to help me is an expert in Chinese flavoring, Andrew Wong. Hello, Andrew. Hi, One of my favorite Chinese foods is actually uh, chicken chow mein. Like millions of people. Oh, yes, quite. Now, what I'd like to do, and it might be working slightly out of the box, I want to turn that dish into a pie. Sounds like a terrible idea. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a challenge on my hands then to do it. So the first thing, I've got a good idea what I want to use for the casing, but I haven't got the chicken chow mein, which is where you come in. Happy to help. There's the kitchen, mate. Lots of different ingredients. You go ahead and show me how to make a good, proper chicken chow mein. Andrew's got a high-end restaurant in central London and has won awards for his cooking, so this should be one great chicken chow mein. This dish in particular, you know, it is a very, very staple dish on every Chinese menu. Yeah. Andrew starts by chopping the raw veg. I'll just relax down here then, Andrew, while you do some work. That's absolutely fine with me. Enjoy. So, the idea of me putting this uh, traditional Chinese dish into a pie horrifies you then? Um, I just think the idea of pies in general, because you're talking about a crusty pie. I haven't um, said anything. I have not said anything. All I've well, said I'm is guessing that you're talking about a, a crusty kind of traditional British pie. And the whole kind of crusty texture is kind of foreign to, uh, to China. Um, you know, traditionally throughout China, everything is steamed. The closest we get to pies um, are probably steamed buns, which you get throughout the whole yeah. of China. But it's just this crumbly, kind of dry te texture, which we use in the West quite a lot, which is very foreign. Mm. Um, there is only one small province in China, which is in Yunnan, where there's a a small buy community that actually produces cheese and milk. Yeah. Uh, besides that, you very rarely see any form of dairy product in any type of wow. Chinese that, cookery. That, that's pastry, really. Because, I mean, take out butter and uh, exactly. milk and, and egg, that's it. You're, exactly. you're not left with much. So, I might have a challenge on my hands convincing Andrew that chow mein in a pie is a good idea. So we're going to heat up the wok, make it nice and hot, the most important part of Chinese cookery. If it's not smoking, don't put anything in yet. Then he adds spices, a beaten egg, diced chicken breast, spring onion, peppers, dried shrimp, bean sprouts, and after a couple of minutes, rice noodles. This dish is one of my most favorite dishes with the kind of mix of spices that are involved. I really like the fact we use uh, dried shrimp as opposed to fresh shrimps. Yeah. And dried shrimps are very, very strong. Some people find it almost overwhelming. Then some fish sauce and a dash of sesame oil. Toss that around in the pan, and after a couple of minutes, it's cooked. That's my sort of grub. So we're just going to finish this off with a little bit of sesame oil. Yep. I like to finish with a touch of lime juice. Oh, I love lime. People don't really associate citrus fruits with Chinese cuisine. No. But in fact, in China, when well, you think about it, China has 14 national borders and a population of 1.6 billion. They can grow anything because they have the manpower and they have the, the varying climates around yeah, the whole of the land. Makes sense. Exactly. So we're just going to finish it with a bit of coriander, which also adds flavour. There you go. Lovely. Thanks, Andrew. Spot on, that, Andrew. That is going to be fantastic in a pie. So what I'm going to do is... You now you can rest now, Andrew. Oh, you thank can, you, you can much. chill down. Now, what I'm going to do is get some phyllo pastry out. I love phyllo. It's actually made from unleavened dough, which comes in sheets so thin they're almost see-through. To give it the strength to hold the chow mein filling, I'm sticking several sheets of the pastry together. I'm just going to add another bit of phyllo, again, to a slightly different angle. I'm just using a bit of oil there to bind it together. Now for the chow mein filling. Try and get a bit of everything. That's going to be the trickiest bit. Wait until it's cooled, and if you don't have Andrew around, you can use last night's takeaway. Now what I'm going to do is gather this up. What are you thinking? Wet things inside a phyllo pastry can always be quite interesting. In a restaurant, sometimes the mixture is too wet, or mm. it explodes in a fire. So, right. Yeah, so fingers crossed. I, I totally agree. But I think with the liquid in there, it's still got gaps in there. So you've still got the, the energy for it to steam and then keep within its bubble. Yeah. I'm actually baking it, so I'm not going to fry it, so I'm going to bake it. So hopefully that should sort of alleviate some of the problems. I'm going to do one more. Looks like a big one-ton. 
Like the it biggest does, it? one ton in the world. Well, yeah, but that's what turns it into a pie, doesn't it? Otherwise, it'd be a one ton. <laughs> this could be the next big thing in all Chinese restaurants. It could be it. I'm, yeah. start, I'm starting something off there. Bake in the oven at 200 degrees C for about 15 minutes. Now I've tried this pie and I hope you do like it, I'd like to learn a little bit more about noodles. How easy are they to make these noodles? These noodles are extruded, so they're, they're rice noodles. But traditional Chinese noodles that you probably see throughout China are all wheat-based. Right. Um, so there's various different ways of making them, whether they be cut with a knife, or they're pulled, mm -hmm. um, or they're extruded, or they're made like uh, Italian pasta. And you, you can do them? Pulling noodles is something that uh, I learned while I was in China. It's a fascinating thing. I, it started off me in a restaurant just kind of looking at the chef doing it, and I got a bit curious. Yeah. And then before I knew it, I was in every day at, like, 6 a.m. with him whipping me on the back and telling me to work harder. Well, can harder. you show me how to pull noodles? Absolutely. I love working with dough. I've done it all my life, but I've never pulled noodles from it, and I can't wait to add that to my repertoire. So this is the most important part. OK. So what you want to do, you want to stretch it by doing a V-shape with your arms. Noodle pulling is a gastronomic wonder that dates back 4,000 years. I smacked myself in the face. No, oh, I've done that many times. We're making wheat noodles, which, just like bread, starts out as dough. It's a basic mix of high gluten flour, salt and water, and it's worked for a long time. That's the first technique. Yeah. The second technique you want to get is you want to get a bouncing technique going. This aligns the gluten, making the dough so stretchy that it eventually becomes long, skinny strands, or noodles. How am I doing then, Andrew? You're a natural. It's a steal with dough, though. I'm comfortable with dough. And after you've perfected that second art, what you're going to do, you're going to increase the elasticity... Yeah. ..and then spin. OK. ..to create a plait. Did yours break, though, Andrew? It broke. <laughs> Mine's broken now, look. It's one of the oldest techniques in Oriental cuisine, and noodles are still made the same way today. In noodle shops, the, the noodle guys will come in at 5 in the morning, they'll make their dough up, yeah. and it's left to rest for six hours before lunchtime starts. So, normally, this process, it's about touch, so you'll feel it when it becomes really elastic. You'll yeah. just know. You'll just... I'm assuming it's very similar to... When you make bread, you just kind of know yeah, when it's you ready. You feel the gluten, yeah. and it almost goes really smooth. Yeah. And you sort of you feel that it's there. And you feel a bit lucky. Yeah, exactly. Like this. It's a bit nuts, though, isn't it? Oh, just broke on a bend there. I'm going to use a bit of Brit technique here as well. I didn't tell you, by the way, but... Um, Normally, the more dough you're working with, the harder it is, and I gave you a, quite a substantial piece of dough. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Andrew. No worries. It's trying to get there. It's still breaking up a bit, though, you know? And you see that the big difference is that yours isn't quite as smooth? No. Have you given me a duff one? It's exactly the same. Yeah. The genius of this technique lies in its simplicity. No utensils, gadgets or gizmos are required. It's all done by hand, and I'm told people pick it up pretty quickly. That's breaking too easily still. That's not right. I, think I had... battered that one to death. <laughs> Time to concentrate on a master at work. This is the clever bit, and the reason this technique is called pulling. So we end up with a plait like so? Yeah. Is that the same dough? Cos I'm looking at that again. That's a different dough. You didn't put the man hours in, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got this dough now, in a pull. So that's one noodle becoming two. Yeah. Two becoming... four. Andrew doubles the amount of strands every time, making his noodles thinner every turn. <laughs> It's incredible, you start to see it now, can't you? So I think after after 12 folds, you can see there's about just under a thousand noodles there. Wow. That looks incredible. At this point, they're ready to be cooked. You can either blanch them, but what I like to do, when they get very thin, I just like to deep fry them. They're gonna go straight into a fryer. Straight into a fryer. There's an area in China called Fujing, uh, where they have a, a street snack, which is basically this, it's called Dalik. 
and it's so regional. Dalek. Dalek, yeah. Like in Doctor Who. I exactly. And yeah. then children after school, they go to the shop, they buy it, and they use it like chips and crisps. After a couple of minutes, they're ready. You can see them more defined, actually, when they're all Absolutely. fired up. Absolutely. That looks incredible. How intricate is that? Oh, I love that. I love that technique, Andrew. In fact, looking at that, I could use that on the top of something, actually. Later, I'll be using Andrew's noodles to add an oriental touch to my tasty traditional chicken and leek pie. I want to show Andrew a great British baking trick. Puff pastry is hard to beat, but it takes time. My cheats puff pastry is quick, easy, and just as tasty. What I'm gonna do is something I've seen a lot of in the last 20 years, is basically create two separate dishes. One is the filling of the pie, and another one nowadays, a lot of people are just baking separately the lid and then just popping it on top. So I'm gonna show you how to make a cheats puff pastry. Add some butter to a bowl of white flour, then crumb it down. I'm looking for a good flake in this. Once it's turned to breadcrumbs, add salt, then a drop of water to bind it all together. And you can see it's beginning to form a sort of rough dough at the moment. Just like the noodle making, the dough needs kneading. To make sure I get the right consistency in the dough, and at the moment, I think that is probably about right. Give it a little bit of work in just to build up a little bit of resistance or a little bit of gluten in it. So I'm happy that it's been worked so far. Then roll out the dough just as you would to make any puff pastry. You could add some fine sugar to turn this into a sweet pie crust. So puddings in, in China, is there any similarities between the puddings there and the puddings here? Chinese cuisine, a lot of the desserts are either boiled soups yeah. or, um, or fruit. Yeah, yeah. Bird's nest soup, which people like to oh, serve. Yeah. They serve that with papaya. Again, it's one of those acquired tastes, and, and, and the kind of appeal to it. Are you telling more... me that deep, deep fried apple and deep fried banana is not a Chinese thing? No, funny enough, I'm not. <laughs> I've been cheesy for all these years. Now for the cheese. The layer of frozen butter is the secret of my cheese puff pastry. Now, here is grated butter, which are frozen to keep it really cold, and you Dig this out and spread it over the top two-thirds of the dough. You want to keep that butter nice and cold, freezer preferably. It's so cold the pastry doesn't need chilling between each roll. Now you want to fold it. So you fold it over a third, half of the butter, and then over again. That is the first turn. You turn it, get your rolling pin out, gently roll it again, if I were using cold, not frozen butter, I'd need to chill the pastry after every roll, which means a lot of waiting round. I've got my dough. I've got another layer I'm going to put in. What's this pastry called? It's a cheese puff pastry. It's just another way of incorporating butter into a dough to make it flaky. So exactly the same way. It just keeps everything cold, so you're going to get good layers and you end up with a good rise. That's the whole point of incorporating butter into a dough. <laughs> That is all the butter I'm going to put into it at this stage. I'm just going to seal the end so a lot of it doesn't come out. Fold it again, over. Now that, because it's incorporated all the butter and the dough has begun to warm up, you want to wrap that and put it in the fridge and leave it to chill down for at least an hour. Again, that'll solidify the butter in there again and you'll get beautiful layers all the way through. I've got one in the fridge which has been chilling for an hour. For just over an hour, actually. And there's our pastry. Then give it one final roll, and it's ready. It's a great way of making a pastry very, very quickly. And it'll create a good flake, a great flake that'll sit on top of your pie. So what you're looking for, really, when you put a lid on, is a bit of flakiness and a good bit of butter. Then cut it up into layers. Glaze with a whole beaten egg and bake in an oven at 200 degrees for 15 minutes until they go golden brown. I've got a surprise for you, Andrew. Soon we'll be eating my chow mein parcels. Look at them, fellas. This is the new taste of China, right there. That is chow mein inside a phyllo pastry. And my cheats pie lids are also done. They've risen just like traditional puff pastry. Now, this is just chicken and leek. You can use anything you want, any pie filling. I want to compare this filling with these two types of topping. Look at that. My cheats puff pastry. And there you have a beautiful pie filling deconstructed. 
with its lid on the top. And if I make a little bit of a gap, get it as cylindrical as possible. And an oriental touch with Andrew's fried noodles. Made from a similar dough to pastry, they make a good crunchy topping to soak up those juices. So you have British deconstructed pie, Chinese deconstructed pie, and this chow mein pie, that is the new taste of China. This is a Chinese banquet with a Western theme, chicken chow mein wrapped in phyllo pastry, and a creamy chicken and leek filling topped in either noodles or a cheats short crust pastry. Andrew, what do you reckon? I think I'm slowly becoming convinced. You'll have to wait a little bit longer <laughs> to try it, OK?